Hey, I'm Alex Rackle from Board Game Co, and today I'm reviewing Sabaka from Ludo Nova Games. Sabaka is a 1 to 4 player midweight euro game, although possibly possibly favoring a bit more towards the heavy side of that midweight euro, uh, featuring a massive rondelle that's going to be the focus of all your actions while you primarily try to gather resources in the game to use those resources in construction to get as many points as possible, although that is just but one of many, many ways to get points in the game. Please, by all means, this is true of all my reviews, but do not take this video as a how to play. It is not how to play, and I'm going to be skipping over so many different and small little details because the game itself does run fairly smoothly once you're up and running, but there's a lot of small little details to be on top of and to be aware of, and this review will not cover them all. What I will be going through, and timestamps down below so you can jump to whatever section you want, or jump straight to my thoughts in case you want those, but in general, in Sabaka, you are operating as a worker placement game with that rondelle in the middle. Players are going to have different types of workers depending on the different trains of the rondelle you're in, the different circles you're in. You're going to have two on the outer ring, one for the center and one for the middle ring, and you're going to be placing those workers. At the beginning of the game, you're going to place those workers onto any of the spots, and mirroring spots have the same action as you go through the game, so there's not as many actions as it looks like. There's going to be effectively half the rondelle, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 different actions in the game. I think that's 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 different actions doubled up on the rondelle. At the beginning of the game, you're going to be placing a worker onto the rondelle to take that action, and we'll go through them shortly. But then after that, you'll be moving your worker, being mindful that you can only move a certain number of spaces before you start paying to move extra, as well as having to pay to go to spots where other players already have workers. So if you double up on spots where there are workers, you're going to be paying extra currency to utilize those spots because there are already people there. That's the core idea of the game. You have four workers across these six rounds of play. You're going to be placing your workers out into those rounds, into those various regions, moving them around the board, taking the actions, and trying to make everything work together as you try to score as many points as possible. To that end, you have a few different things you're trying to be mindful of, and let's just go through the various spots as much as we possibly can. Starting off over here, these two spots are going to be giving you resources in different configurations. They're the various queries you're going to. They can be helpful to getting a bunch of resources, and you will need resources to be building buildings in the game, the major and minor constructions. We have major constructions here for the first era and the second era. We have minor constructions over here, and then also for crafting your various poems, the uh, the luxified uh, endgame primary poems, and then the ongoing poems round to round. So you're going to need resources to craft those. Over here on these spaces over here, on the outer ring so far, you have these storehouses. These storehouses are going to be important because you start the game with kind of these basic nothing storehouses that just store a single good, but then as you upgrade storehouses, you get an ability as you put them into your warehouse. You can see over here a player board. We're going to be putting your storehouses into the board, but then also getting the ability and scoring points as you upgrade, the, upgrade those and also giving you more places to store goods, which you will need as you go through the game because if you can only store those four starting goods, you will not have a lot of opportunity to gather what you need and take as much advantage of the systems as you can. As you wander around the board, we have the market phase over here. The market's going to give you two gold and allow you to carry out two exchange actions. And again, on both sides of the board, the market exchange is, is centered over here and it lets you trade in different resources and or sell or buy different resources. So exchange, trade, or sell, you get two of those actions. Over here, you get to engage in a major or minor construction. They have slightly different costs to them, but the general idea is for a major construction, you're going to pay one of that resource, plus two different resources of your choice. In the game, the game very rarely requires you for, to give in a specific combination of resources. Rather, most constructions in the game are, you know, you need something, then plus you get to fill it out with any degree of a variety of different resources to get the point conversion on those resources. The different resource types are going to be worth one, two, three, or four points, and depending on what you pay for, that will give you more points in the game, but then major and minor constructions also give you additional extras. So the major constructions over here will be moving you up this track where you'll get different bonuses, plus giving you either different resources, actions, pariahs, income, all these different resources in the game, depending on which minor construction you did, as well as giving you a different little icon which might be relevant for the various favor modules which will get you extra points. Then minor constructions over here will also give you that little symbol. They'll also cost resources, but then you can go ahead and create chaining patterns of these. So if you link these two, you get that little action. There's four different colors you can link. You'll get different bonuses and actions if you do those. So both the major and minor constructions are giving you different reasons to go ahead and engage in those. 
that's going to be the outer shell. Resources, warehouses, market actions, and major and minor constructions. On the inner shell, you're going to be moving your ship, shipping to these various zones on the board. You'll pay income equal to the distance from your closest ship or from the original dock, and then you're going to go ahead and take a little bit of a landing there, which will go ahead and give you the resources there on these different modules here. You'll see there's going to be a left hand and a right hand side, depending on over here we can consolidate our relationship, which is where you'll move your ship to the other side and you'll get the bonus over there as well as the ongoing income for doing those. You also, the first player to visit any one of these regions, will get this little token here, which can be exchanged for a prior or for a uh, income over here, a dinar. And then you're trying to be mindful of where you try to go over here, depending on the specific scoring goal you have in place. There's a lot of reasons to visit these areas. You do will want to be trading in different resources, which you're going to be gathering from these zones over here. But you'll gather these resources during the course of the game. You'll upgrade those resources to the side, and then you'll trade them in as you visit various spots, depending on the required area there which will give you income, which will give you points as well as priors on this track over there. And that's going to be these two actions, shipping and consolidating, and again, they are mirrored on both sides. And then lastly over here, we are going to go ahead and earn the city bonus of an area where you already have a ship, as well as converting two resources, depending on the resources you've stored over here. Those are going to be some of the regions over here have extra auxiliary bonuses, taking extra materials, taking these resources, and when you take those, you'll be able to process them with this production action here, although you can also do so by visiting either side of there again and taking a processing action once this is cleared. That's going to be the inner ring here. Finally, you can go ahead and craft poems. When you craft a poem, these spots will let you craft new poems where they have a left and a right hand side. The left hand side is going to give you ongoing benefits, either income of some form or alternatively bonuses. When you do X, do Y. When you pay for this, pay one less. There'll be different bonuses on the left hand of a poem whenever you construct it. The right hand will give you an instant benefit, which you can also re-trigger by going to these spots. And then finally over here, you can take money plus one money for each poems you have over there. So you're going to go ahead and have the poem centered action in the center, which is going to be relevant for these poems, as well as the end game poems over here, which are worth nice large chunks of points if you went ahead and gather those and fulfilled the various objectives. That's kind of the main thing going on in the game. You have this rondelle action over here, which you're going to be mindful of building various minor and major constructions. You have to be trying to get resources throughout the course of the game through a ton of bonuses, either on the trials themselves, the queries as you ship different things in the game. You're going to be trading in those resources at the various converted point ratio in order to get as many points as possible. At the end of each round, there's going to be a bit of a pain phase. We have to pay in these pariahs over here and then alternatively lose if you don't lose points if you're not able to. But you're going to be slowly moving down this track if you're not able if you are to pay on those prize for the end of round uh, cost over there you're also gonna have these various bonuses that are gonna give you specific things to be trying to go for so for example right now you want blue poems and you want those two building constructions and those will give you extra points every third round over there every every other round as you go through that and then if you're playing with the advanced module which I do recommend you're also going to have these events coming out in play, which will be triggered by the round sequence. And these events will give you different small modifications to the gameplay, different things that will adjust exactly how you interact with the board as you try to go through it. There's a bunch of other things I did not cover. Like I said already, there's a lot of rules going on here, a lot of small nuances as far as exactly how the systems play out. There's this little track over here we didn't cover. We didn't go into all the exact end game the rules are effectively. But for the most part, the general idea is in this game, you are trying to manage the rondelle you have four actions a turn, four workers, two on the outer ring, one on the center ring, one on the inner ring, and you're using those to gather resources, to be mindful of your money, to trade those in to build buildings, so you can move up various tracks, to gather various poems, to be able to cash in on your endgame poems, gathering points throughout the course of the experience, both from here, from this area, from those emperor, Emperor's Favors there, I don't believe they're called Emperor's Favors, so I don't remember what they are called, but past that you're trying to spread out over here on the board, paying to move your ships around the board, moving them to the other side to get those additional income, additional bonuses and, and income from various regions on the board as you go through it, and trying to do all of that more efficiently than the players to your left and your right, well not specifically left and your right, just the players in the game, doing it more efficiently than the players in the game as you try to score as many points as possible in Sabaka. That's the general how to play. I say general how to play because, again, lots of nuances and details I'm not getting into in the effort of trying to convey this in uh, 7 minutes as opposed to 17 minutes. With that, let's go ahead and dive into what the, the, the ease of play, which for the most part, I actually found the game, despite me going into this now, I did not find the game that complicated. The rules for the most part were pretty clear. There are like 16 pages worth of rules and there's a solo mode as well, but overall, I found it... 
I found everything kind of does work. There's a lot of small details going on, but it wasn't the hardest game to actually get up and running for a game of this weight class. This is no Century Spice Road. There's a whole lot more going on here, but for a game that gives you this much depth to the experience, I found it pretty straightforward ish. I say ish while giving you all the caveats of the rules that are not going to be present in this review, but again, easy enough to dive into. Uh, game time can't, comes in at around 90 to 120. That will vary depending on player count as well as how AP prone you are, but around 90 to 120 for the game. I'm not even sure what the box says. Does it have it listed over here? It might be on the other side over there, but either way, around 90 to 120 at least for us. As far as what I like, don't like, and can see others not liking, starting off with what I like, which is there's a lot of pathways on how to explore what you're optimizing in Sabaka. There's a lot of areas in the game, and you're never going to be able to get everything done. You might be trying to improve and upgrade your warehouses as much as possible, and continuing to upgrade your warehouses, because you can continue to replace existing warehouses to get even more benefits and points from that. You can try to go heavily into the major or minor constructions, which will give you a lot of points depending on how you pursue them, or alternatively, you can ignore them completely and focus instead on all the poems over here, and even when you're focusing on poems, you might focus on the ongoing benefits to improve your tableau by building all these left-hand blue poems, or just get a bunch of immediate benefits by building the right hand sides and you want to pay attention to which side is beneficial for you at any given point. Meanwhile, you're focusing on the various uh, end of round favors to drive your economy and what you're going to try to do there. While also being mindful of this, this, this shipping track over here with a ton of ways to actually get your ships out and into play because there's a lot going on as far as the shipping track and how much you want to push this area versus the poems versus the constructions. There's a bunch of different avenues to pursue as you go through this. And there's a ton of variability between the buildings, the warehouses, the Rondell focus, the shipping and more, there's a lot of different ways to approach a, a fairly direct engine of place your worker, move your worker around the rondelle, try to get the action you need, pay the cost of anyone already there, be mindful of your of your money in the game, and the rondelle is a challenging way that kind of gets in the way of your plans. Between the rondelle and the various bonuses in the game, you're constantly going to be forced to re-examine exactly how you want to approach Sabaka as you play it. This is not a game where you have your set, you know, path, pathway and plan. This is a game that you should and will be adjusting your gameplay strategies depending on what comes out and depending on what the other player do in the game. Building out your tableau in the game is fun. There's a bunch of things that give you that tableau reward, whether it's the income you'll get from the various shipping tracks or those blue poems. Those will give you a bunch of things that constantly improve, not just, you know, doing stuff for the sake of doing stuff, but getting better at doing stuff as you play through the game. And for myself, that's usually my favorite part. I like building out, about, I like building out tableaus. I like having more stuff coming to me every single game. And every single action in this game often gives you these secondary bonuses. Everything you do is not just one thing, it can be multiple things, especially as you're going engaging with major minor constructions, you're going to get more stuff from it. Or those instant side of the poems, you'll build a poem, which will give you points, but you're also going to go ahead and get the side of the poem that is helpful to you. So you're getting a whole bunch of things that are constantly mixing in as far as what goes on and how you approach it. And then speaking of how you approach it, the events, the events, or even just the storehouses, the way those come out, but the events over here, you're going to have a giant stack of events and those will give you different ways that force you to re-examine how you approach Sabaka, in addition to the fact that you're tr constantly trying to be mindful of how you approach it based on the other rewards, uh, based on the other scoring conditions and the players and how they get in the way, but having those events in play which will affect, you know, what the market costs or how the stopping on workers will cost you extra money. There's all these different small nuances to the gameplay that force you to re-examine how you approach the engine even after you've learned it and gone through it multiple times. As far as what I don't like in the game, for the most part, there's a few small small things, but I would say starting off, uh, very uh, the game itself feels very restrictive. There's a lot of pathways as far as how you can pursue things, but this is a game which every time I've played it, I have felt like I didn't have enough of something. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough resources. I don't have enough actions. This is a game that really forces you to try to get as much done as you possibly can with not enough resources at your disposal. Again, resources being money, points, uh, priors, anything. You're constantly trying to struggle to make sure you have all your ends met in this game, and you will not have your all your ends met. You need enough resources, but to get the resources, you need storage space, so you need more warehouses. But in order to get those warehouses, you might need to go ahead and move around the board and get this. You you want to be mindful of the fact that at the end of the round, you have your prize that are going to run out, you need to pay those income in. And so you're constantly trying to get everything in this game, and you only have two more actions before you measure those end game scoring conditions, those, those end of round scoring conditions, and you don't have enough of that thing over there as well. In Sabaka, 
everything you do doesn't have enough economy in play. The game feels restrictive. It's a game where you could make it all work, and I have made it all work, but sometimes it feels more like the work than the fun because I'm constantly trying to get the thing that I'm missing, and there's always something missing in the game. I'll also say that I didn't like the fact that the payment system in the game kind of felt arbitrary. When you pay for major or minor constructions, or even for the poems, there's not really a set cost of I need two wood, one stone, and one wheat, whatever, katan, I don't know. Rather, you have to pay one of one resource and then a bunch of other resources that you can pick and choose as you go which it's it, in a weird way that almost counters my last point of the game feeling too restrictive and now suddenly we have this loosey-goosey uh, economy system of what you pay for but I'll say the game still manages to feel restrictive it still feels very 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 restrictive but additionally when you pay for things it doesn't feel like there's a specific cost it feels like you make it up as you go along which uh, maybe that's just to make the maybe that's to stop the game feeling even more restrictive than it already does. Uh, but for myself, that kind of felt a little loose in a game that's such a tight economic engine. It felt arbitrarily, weirdly unrewarding to say, "Well, these are the resources I have, so those are the resources I'm going to go ahead and commit to the construction." You could argue the thematic aspect because you know they're extras, they're the, the various I don't know the decorations around the window. I don't know. You could argue a thematic reason, but it felt a little loose on a top of an otherwise very precise game, a very precisely structured Euro game. As far as I can see others not liking, first of all I'll say the iconography can be overwhelming. You will pick it up as you go through it, but there are a lot of icons, there are a lot of things, even the difference between pariahs and deaners and, uh, and points, everything there, as well as every single one of these actions having its own thing. There are good player aids to the game's credit, so there are good player aids, but there's a lot of iconography and a lot of just looking to see what everything does and how it does it. So you're going to have to pick up a bunch of symbols as you play through this. And again, good player aids, but it'll take you likely a full game before you have all these things mentally under wraps and are not checking that player aid every second. Additionally, the game is very dry, which is not necessarily a problem, but it's a very dry game. The theme is kind of loosely there. I didn't get a strong sense of the theme as I played through it. Ultimately, it's a, it's a resource conversion engine. You're going to be going ahead and you're going to be turning this into that, trying to gather these resources, turn them into points, just trying to turn this into that through your actions as efficiently as possible as you play through Sabaka. And then lastly, money is tight. I already said everything kind of feels restrictive, but in particular, you will run out of money all the time. You will not have enough money to get your actions done, and if that bothers you, if a general tight economy, specifically with around money, bothers you, this game is going to have that in spades, so be mindful of that before you dive into this one. Which brings me to final thoughts on Sabaka, and for me, Sabaka is an interesting one, because this one falls, this one falls into the category where a game does not stand on its own merits anymore. Games exist within an ecosystem of so many other games, and that certainly affects my opinion and personal perception of Sabaka, because I like what Sabaka is doing. I found the game gives you a lot of challenging aspects to go through as you try to figure out how to power your own way through the system. I thought it was very clever, very well designed, and I think it is a game that's going to rank higher for others than it does for me. For me, it's a 3 out of 5, which might seem a little out of place considering all the nice things I'm saying about it, but I both recognize how well Sabaka is designed, and also for me, I'm just not in a rush to dive into it again. This is one that the tightness of the game, combined with everything the game is doing in the ecosystem of all the amazing Euro games there are out there, some that are more of a fit for myself, I think Sabaka is both incredibly clever, incredibly well done, and ultimately a game that I don't particularly need to dive into again. It is well designed and is well well crafted, there is a strategy in play as far as how you engage with the system, and it all felt way too tight to be the rewarding, to give me the rewarding feels I want out of a Euro game. There were rarely incredibly clever moments. There are occasional moments. There are occasional moments where you have a cascading turn, where you buy a major construction, you pivot that into a poem, and you go ahead and get a poem, and now you have a, suddenly a new tableau benefit. There certainly are things going on here that are enjoyable about Sabaka, but I would say the game weight and the amount of crunchiness going on here relative to what it's doing, overall, I both recognize how well the game is designed and think it will work for a lot of people, especially those looking for a nice, heavy, crunchy, economic, midweight euro, but for me, ultimately, it's a 3 out of 5. A good game, I enjoyed it, but I don't necessarily feel the need to play it again. If you're looking for other game recommendations, first of all, Lacrimosa. Kind of very similar, this game gave me very similar feels to Lacrimosa, but something about Lacrimosa resonated with me a lot more from Devere Games. And again, I do think they were very similar in the overall feel, 
but somehow one worked for me more than the other. And additionally, Merv, Heart of the Silk Road. It's a game I haven't played in a while, but overall, this game gave me similar vibes, both slightly thematically, but also mechanically towards the, the tight resource engine that is Merv, the Heart of the Sil Silk Road from... I don't remember the publisher. I'm blanking on the publisher, but from, from that publisher. In any case, and until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Hope you found this review helpful, and as always, I hope you have a good one.